Good afternoon to everyone. Today we are going to do something different. So welcome to Body Mind Soul Live Talk number 58. And you can feel the music so you can groove together with me. Today we are going to talk about be crazy in love without being foolish in love. And with me today afternoon, we have someone all the way from USA. You welcome Magdalena. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned with me. So before that, let us just enjoy a little bit of the music and hit the share button. So if this is your first time watching Body Mind Soul Live Talk, we have been doing this for like one year plus and body mind soul aims to impact lives positively we talk about everything about life okay so one of it is love so are you ready to groove with me if you are you know click the share button whether you're watching this from youtube or on facebook just make sure you're on this two platform because i love to engage with everyone and make sure that you drop me a comment where you're from and how are you feeling with this different opening from Christina and you can groove together click the share button click the subscribe button whatever it is get more people to come in and say hello and send me your love yeah that's nice and the best part is this is our seventh year anniversary we are seven years old this month Yay! All right. And then, you know what? I really, really wish to share with everyone, you know, body, mind, soul. We have run this, you know, um, community. It's free for everyone. Yeah. So all you need to do is just click on the link, join the community, and you get to read all our content for free. And at the same time, for those who are our community, what you can do is you have a free workshop coming up. Go to the next slide, please. All right, so Stephanie Wu from The Golden Space will be running Diving Into The Unknown on the 24th July, 4 to 6 p.m. Okay, so remember to sign up yourself if you have registered as our Body My Soul community. So now I'm going to stop talking. And just put my face in front. I mean, gonna groove. While we are grooving, I have my cup of coffee. Thank you to our beverage sponsor, Vegan Coffee Brew with Plant. Coffee can be as convenient and it's vegan and it tastes good and it's come in sachet. You can make it with any water. Yeah. So thank you to Brew with Plants. So let us groove. I'm not going to bring up the speaker until, you know, someone just say hello to me first or groove with me. <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit requesting today. So what's the topic that we are talking? Let me see. Ah, the song is coming to an end. How is everyone? We are going to talk about be crazy in love without being foolish in love, yeah? How many of us have been foolishly in love? I must be confessing, I did. <laughs> hello, hello. All right. Let me just end the song. It's coming to an end. Okay, everyone, I think we are all ready for someone all the way from USA to share with us, you know, um, be crazy in love without being foolish in love. And there are so much of wisdom. Hi, hi, hi. Yes, we are live on Body Mind Soul Magazine Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel and all our content is evergreen, is timeless and is available free for everyone with one aim. We wish to impact life positively and one of the ways is talk about love especially times like this. And we have, you know, someone that is very special who are also our article contributor, um, writers that have been writing articles published on Body, Mind, Soul magazine. Uh, let's welcome Yuvelka, uh, a holistic full spectrum certified advanced doula. Put your hands, warm up your palms together and clap, 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 clap so that we can get Yuvelka on over here. Hello, you welcome. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm doing well, thank you. 
It's only about maybe three ten in the morning over here, so I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> it doesn't look like three a.m., three ten a.m. over there in the USA at Pennsylvania. <laughs> My right. goodness! Thank you so much for coming on board together with Body Mind Soul. Thank you, thank you very much. And you're welcome. Maybe you can share a little bit with us and all our audience. What is doula? What ah. is doula? You know, because you are a holistic, full spectrum certified advanced doula. Yes. So what is that all about? To be a doula is um it's a person, a companion. We we are non-medical providers, but we're here to help along in the journey, primarily for a woman, you know, before she gets pregnant, you know, during her pregnancy and postpartum, just mm -hmm. to be her companion to help her there emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And although mm -hmm. we are not medical providers, we should be aware of certain medical conditions that can occur so that way we know how to, you know, raise awareness to an emergency. Hey, something is going on. We need to do these things, but we're not medical providers. Ah. So that's what a doula is. And, you know, here in the United States, you know, um, the term was new to me a couple of years ago because I always considered myself a birth companion, a birth coach, uh, a midwife's assistant. Mm. But it expands now to, you know, even end of life doulas. You have even end of life doulas to help a family oh, wow. go through the transitional process. Oh, wow. Wow. So basically it's someone, a companion, but equipped with a knowledgeable knowledge uh, sufficient knowledge yeah but you don't classify as a medical personnel um to, to accompany a person throughout the process so it's very good for all the ladies out here but if you are a man please stay tuned because when we talk about love is applicable genderless isn't it correct you welcome that's right that's right <laughs> it, it all it all comes back to love right Yes, yes. We yes. could be crazy in love. We just don't want to be foolish. Yes. So maybe we just go in straight away. I think a lot of us are very curious, you know, how to differentiate ourselves being crazily in love but not foolish in love. You're welcome. Based on your experience. Well, you know, with what I do as a doula, you know, we do address the concerns of the young ladies. You know, young ladies, mm. first-time moms, first-time wives, first-time mothers. And it, it all comes with, you know, us being young at heart, you know, that 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 dream of uh, falling in love, love at first sight, the 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 butterflies in our stomach, you know, um, wanting all the things, you know, yes. all those magical things, you know, all the, the nothing can go wrong, you know. And, and then we, we also can couple it, too, with, you know, whatever our beliefs might be. You know, I come from a background where you know, we recited certain scriptures, you know, that love hopes all things and bears all things and love understands all these things. And even in my youth, I was extremely foolish because I went in with everything that, you know, it's like, if my ever, eyes found you ever, appealing. Yeah, everlasting, like ever as, uh, what, do, what is that phrase? Everlasting. Everlasting, no, uh, uh, yeah, forever after. Yeah. Everlasting, you know, the like the Cinderella stories. Yes. Happily ever after. There we go. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was like the tip of my tongue when we talk about love. I just gone crazy as well. Uh, not foolish, not foolish. Yeah. So yes, exactly. So Yuvelka, how 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 do we go about with this? Yeah. So what what is the criteria? Um, you know, based on your experience that you have come across with so many. How many years you have been? Um, a, a doula, a, a companion? I've been uh, certified and holistically about five years now. You know, wow. um, yeah, uh, here in the States, in the United States, you know, you mm -hmm. have those that are certified, those that are not. And then there's many different avenues that you can take as a doula. You know, like I said, we also um, teach like young ladies about their menstrual cycle, you know, and that's the beginning, right? The hormones kick in, our bodies are changing, we're still going through our bodies changing, hormones kicking in, and then also belonging to a tribe, you know, finding crushes, you know, finding that someone else, what what age does that start? You know, we start, I think, start getting the giggles as young ladies, right? About 15, 16, 
you know, and then it's either we're shy or we're very confident, you know, depending on how our families raise us, you know, what mm -hmm. background we have, all of that matters and counts for both, right? For the mm -hmm. guys and the girls, both yes. of that, you know, comes into that. And this, this all comes into place before you even think about having a family. Wow. You know, so it's like, you really got to get to know yourself first. Do we teach those things to our youth though? Because I know with me, it was like, I was already trained to take care of a home, to cook. You know, I was already prepared. <laughs> and wh where do these other things come in? You know, how do I choose the right mate? You know, how do I choose the mate if I don't even know myself? Well, you Yuvelka, that's just so, so, you know, it just bring me to a conversation. Sorry to just cut you off. It just bring me to a conversation I just had this afternoon with an acquaintance that I just met. And she said to me, you know, everyone asks us to get married. And it's like a society perception that, you know, whether it's a guy or a girl, until you reach certain stage of your life, get married, you have family, and then you consider your life is complete, right? But she said to me, but no one taught us what relationship is all about in school. Yeah, we know we need to get married. We need to have family, right? So, Yuvelka, you really hit a very good point over there. You know, do we know ourselves? So, Yuvelka, how can we know ourselves? Well, it's almost like, you know, um, there's this uh, technique that they use in business called the SWOT analysis. And, you know, and when I give my training with my clients, I tell them, you should do that to your life all the time. Wow. What's your strength? What's your weaknesses? What's the opportunities? What are the threats? You know, mm -hmm. and if we teach this as a young person, they can break it down, you know, more or less, you know, are you a morning person? Does he need to be a night person? Is he a night person? Are you a morning person? Are you a family person? You know, do you, you can be married, but not want to build a family, right? Even mm -hmm. though everyone's perception is, I'm going to get married and have a family. You know, my two best friends married each other and they have no children. They travel the whole world. You know, you have to know yourself. Your partner needs to know himself. Mm -hmm. And then together you get to know what are we going to be like, you know, as a couple, right? Because we have to keep it hot and spicy. How, how are we going to keep this as a couple? And then are we going to build a family? I think, I think one of the very good questions is how to even keep it hot and spicy all the time if we don't even know ourselves and we don't assess, you know, um, our, our love at first sight partner. <laughs> we have someone on the floor sharing something. Yes, very important points. You're welcome with heart shape. You know, we welcome all our audience, you know, whether you are coming from YouTube or Facebook. You know, if you have any questions or you have any comments, you know, feel free to type it in and feel free to share out this live talk because we are going to talk about love and how can we assess, you know, if this is the right mate that we want to form family together, whether it's for men or women. Yeah. So you welcome. How do we do the assessment, whether, uh, what, what is the step or what are the steps or the tips from you based on your experience, you know, working with so many clients, how do we know whether we, this is the right person for us? You, you have to ask the questions. You have to ask the questions, you know, find more things that are in common than are not, but then also have that balance of, having things that are not in common to keep the mystery between both of you. You want to get to know this person. You know this person, but there's still a little bit more that you want to dig in to know, right? That's the almost like the the, the cat and mouse play, right? The, the, the nature of the hunt, as they say. Because not only is the man hunting, but the woman is too. You know, it's almost like in the animal kingdom, right? We, we forget sometimes that we are part of the animal. We're mammals. You know, there's certain things in the animal kingdom. It's usually the, the male bird that has most of the colors and puts on the dance, you know, to attract <laughs> the ladies. We still have to, you know, keep that into consideration ourselves, but we have to know ourselves first. So we ask those questions, you know, what do you like? What, what are the things that you can, you know, a lot of people don't like to go into the what ifs, but sometimes you have to go into the what if. What, what kind if, of what ifs? What if your partner is the one that's a workaholic and he works all the time? Are there things that you can do either to work, you know, meet his hustle, or are you going to be staying at home? 
What are the things that you can do to keep yourself busy? Like, what are those things? So that way you're not sitting there waiting for someone else to entertain you. You know how to entertain yourself. You're not out here looking at the clock like, where is he? What is he doing? If it's not giving you any reason to think that way, correct? He could honestly be working. So you need to keep your feelings and emotions in check. What are those things? What are those recreational and leisure activities that, that you're capable of doing on your own? You know, to be content with your own space, with your own energy. What are those things? You know, um, are you gonna be are you gonna be working at home? Are just all these other questions, you know, the temperaments. Are you okay being alone? Some people <laughs> they need people. They don't, they don't want to be alone, whether it's a partner or a friend. Are you going to be on the phone with the girlfriends? Are they going to be part of your relationship? There's so many things. What about your in-laws? You know, mm. how, how close are they going to be in relation to your relationship with your partner? There's so many things that, you know, you need to sit down and say, am I okay with this? And if I'm not okay with this, what are the, uh, what are my contingency plans? What um. can I do to cushion some of these things because everything is not, as they say, peaches and roses, but it can be, but it can be. You have to ask the questions. What is your strength in this area? What's the weakness in this area? Is there an opportunity for growth? For is both. There, for both. It has to be for both. It takes two to tango. It has to be for both. Hmm. How about question like, do you love children or do you want children? Yes. Some people, you know, you, you need to ask them because just because you're in a relationship does not mean that this is this is the same journey for this person. They just might mm -hmm. want to be married to you and in a relationship with you. They never anticipated having children. They never planned for it. It wasn't even a thought. You know, it could be two workaholics, but you need to know because then that's when you know how to ask those questions for support. Because when you go to build a family, your number one advocate and your number one support is your spouse, is wow. that person. Are they going to be wow. present for the birth? Are they going to be, you know, there's some. Are they going to do housework together or they are looking at the wife? Only the wife should do the exactly. house chores and, and the husband should not. Do they have that kind of concept? I think this right. is this is. These are the things that you are asking. Absolutely. For to do a SWOT analysis. Yeah, based a on SWOT what analysis. Learning. Yeah, you have mm. to. You have to because what if you're not a great cook? Is he okay to cook? You know, or is it and, okay to order? <laughs> and, and do we have the budget for that? You know, there, mm. there's so many things. Are we going to eat out? You know, every every so often, every three nights, every four nights. Is it once a week? Once a month? Is it just on anniversaries? Is it just on, you know, holidays? It, you have to ask the questions. And the best way is to be friends, right? You know, yes, your eyes can be attracted to what you see, you know, and your your nose can be attracted to what you smell, right? And the beauty of things. And your ears could be tantalized to the words that you hear from another person because they're just so sweet to the ears. But you need to ask the questions and you need to be friends. Yuvelka, can I ask you? Yes. When should a person start to ask this kind of question in a relationship? Oh, see, I, I tend to be the type of person that, you know, I like to use discernment, but if there's a burning question, be have tact in asking it. Because nowadays in, in the world that we're growing in, you know, all of us as adults, as young persons, we need to ask the questions. Because it's what you don't know that might hurt you, right? You might go in with an assumption that everything is okay. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really know this person. Or you thought you knew the person, but you didn't ask. You know, I use context clues. I use context clues, you know, to pretty much think that I know this person. You need to ask. You know, this is not, uh, this is something that's very serious. You know, when you're thinking about marriage, when you're thinking about looking for a mate, when you're thinking about connecting with another person, Mm -hmm. You know, so that you can see eye to eye, you need to ask the questions, but you need mm -hmm. to know yourself first. How many people go into a relationship and they don't fully know themselves? They thought that they liked this thing. They thought that this would be okay. And it's not. It'll end up in a breakup, right? Which now causes trauma. And then it'll end up in 
what separation or divorce because you didn't take the time. You have to mm. know the other person's mechanics as well to dealing with certain situations. How do they deal with anger? How do they deal when the children don't settle down? Because that's another thing too. People think we're going to have children and it's peaches and roses. No, it's not. It's team no sleep. You're not going to sleep for like 10, 15 years. You're not going to sleep. <laughs> Okay, just to let just to let the audience know that you know Yuvelka is speaking from her experience because Yuvelka has four kids. Okay, four children. Yeah, definitely is experienced enough to share with all the uh, ladies and gentlemen on our live talk who's watching us right now. Definitely, and I think you know Yuvelka. One thing, um, a lot of times we are not being equipped or educate or bring awareness of to a relationship is to check on our medical personal medical background as well. Yeah, it's it's very important. How many people know their family history? How how many of the, how many of us have a record of that from our families, from our elders? You know, how, how many of us have that? And I can speak for myself being in, in the United States. I don't I don't even have that. My mom my family was from the Dominican Republic. So they mm -hmm. came into this country and it's do we have all our records? Do we have all the information that we can pass down, you know, for our legacy? We don't, but we need to ask these things because that wow. also comes into play in building a family, right? Something wasn't disclosed, you know, a health concern, a, a, a disability or anything can come up. You want to be somewhat prepared. That's what this is for. That's what a SWAN analysis is, right? To have strategies oh to help you for your success. But my admin is joking at the back. Christina is learning so much and she's preparing herself, you know. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna be authentic today with, with you, Velka. It's very it's a very interesting topic when we talk about be crazily in love, be crazy in love, but not foolish in love. Yeah. And um, okay, Yuvelka, how about this situation? So uh, a relationship or this two person, they have kind of like cross check. They have a chat. They have an open heart conversation to understand each other needs, you know, to know all the black and whites as much as they can um, based on the uh, tips that you have given about having children. Are you OK to be there 24 hours? You know, do you expect me to do work home as well as working and then taking care of of, of the family, not just the children, but in-laws as well? Um, you know, things like that. I think it's very important and you highlighted it in such a way that making us realize it is most important before rushing into a happily ever after wedding ceremony. Everyone look forward to that. But as a wedding planner, to be honest, I was a wedding planner in the past for six years. What I realized is sometimes I look at the couples when I visit them a year later, the everlasting happily wedding ceremony that is so bizarre, you know, so big, it all boils down to all the small little things that they didn't, maybe they have not talked about. Yeah. And what if, Yuvelka, there's a situation that they have talked and they realize that there are a lot of unfit alignment to, to, to go to the next step, but to, these two persons are really in love. So based on your experience, what can we do or what can this two person do? Well, it depends on their communication. You know, are they the, the, the type of persons that can keep a communication going between them? And if not, then that's when you need the communication coach or a counselor or someone to step in to allow you to keep that communication going so you can get the words and the feelings out, right? Because they say in, 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 in all these memes that we see, you, rem you remember how a person makes you feel. You know, so mm -hmm. in order for, for the connection to still stay spicy and hot and that you feel right, acknowledged and heard, you need to keep the communication open. So have another person come in, a professional, not another friend, you know, a professional to come in because they're equipped with how to keep your relationship open with communication. So then you both grow in that area. It's important. It really is because, you know, you, you, <laughs> you get involved with someone and if you don't ask the, the questions, how would you know? How would you know? Are, my, are, are you, are you going to live with your in-laws? Um, does does he want to do all the cooking? You know, um, are you going to be running a family business? Will you start your own business? Um, just 
all the things, all the things. How about keeping it spicy? How about if I'm going to be running a business, I might be tired. I might not look like this from the wedding day forward. You know, is it okay <laughs> if I'm in sweats and a t-shirt, you know, or you're the type that, you know, you have to have a glam doll. The, it, there's a lot of things that you need to ask. And it's the, uh, the reverse too. You know, sometimes he wants someone down to earth, you know, or someone to you just relax, you know, let's do 50, 50, but you have to ask the questions. You have to ask the question. Nowadays it's very important. Mm. You know, are you a spender? Is he a saver? These things are important. And even we forget to ask sometimes we get swept up in, you know, in feeling the, the joys of happiness and being liked and somebody finding me attractive and I find them attractive and it feels, it feels good. Everything is matching and we forget, we forget. <laughs> We have a comment here. Interesting SWOT analysis for relationship. Yeah, never thought about that. So, Ivelka, really, I think SWOT analysis, anyone can find it on Google what it's all about and just follow the instruction. Perhaps you can use that to assess yourself as well as your partners and then both come to a middle ground to meet each other expectation. So, Ivelka, let us just move forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say, okay, this two person, they've gone through their SWOT analysis and, you know, they really uh, uh, align their expectation. They have talked through all the question, the dollar and cents questions as well, the, the housework, um, the who taking care of the babies and they have come to uh, agreeable terms and they look right. forward to form a family. So what can or and, 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 and they have gotten married, let's say. So definitely, I think a lot of us um, would like to have children if they like to have children. So what can, what can uh, the first time mom prepare themselves, whether it's emotionally, mentally, and physically based on your experience, Yuvelka? Well, th that, that's a very good question because it also comes to play with um, your elders. What kind of relationship do you have with your elders and that support? You know, do you Why? have Why the so? older women, the, the wisdom, right? The wisdom of the women, you know, they, they are the ones that would help you, you know, any tips and tricks for the marriage, any tips and tricks for the family. That's why the extended family, the elders are so important. But if you, if you don't have that, or if you don't have close ties and connections, you know, you're at odds with any in-laws or any elders, you need to find that support. It's, it's so important. That's where a doula comes in. We're not here to just support the mother. We're here to support the family. What does the husband need? Is he a first time father? You know, does he know how to support his wife? Is he okay with being present in such a life changing situation? Very intimate moment. Will he pass out? I haven't seen you guys pass out, but will he, you know, is he that type? You, there's so many things. You got to find those, now that you have the foundation, right? That you got married, the family, now you're about to get started. You need to have the extra structure, the extra supports to keep the foundation up and going. What does that look like? Who's going to, who's going to help you? Am I going to be around for your morning sickness? How do the, tri you know, play it out in your mind, the trimesters, how do they look? Look up what those symptoms are. Morning sickness, Some for some women, the first trimester to the second trimester, you know, all these things. Where are you going to get that help from? It shouldn't just mm -hmm. be the couple. When they say it takes a village, it takes a village. And we should keep that mindset. You know? And you know, that there's, in the Chinese, there's a saying, um, when, uh, when two person get married, it's, uh, it's always not just the two person. You know what? Now you say like that, it takes a village. It really meant it takes a village. <laughs> Yes, it, it really does. When you, well, I sit back and I look at my clients, you know, different ages, this is a different time. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking back and I'm like, wow, it does take a village. That's why I, I, I thought this is like the, the biggest business deal you'll ever make. You need a SWOT analysis. Even when the teach it to your children too. What are your strengths, honey? What are your weaknesses? What's up? It's so important with everything. So that way you, you're better prepared. So you don't walk in foolishly. You know, you have some idea. 
you have some plan. It doesn't have to be the perfect plan. You just have some of it, some strategic things in place, the what is, the just in case, and what are those contingency plans? What would you do? It's almost like when you buy a home, right? You're like, okay, if the lights go out and we have no running water, what's our plan? Some people mm. don't have a plan. It's like, oh my gosh, others have a plan. Well, at least we have a gallon of water per person, so we have five or, you know, we have, what's your plan? It's important mm. to have a plan. Mm. Mm. And that's uh, what I see. Coming back to the having that elder woman support, you know, for the first time mother, what kind of questions should the, you know, you don't know what you don't know, Ivelka, especially first time mother. So what kind of questions that we should ask our elderly women so that we are prepared for as a first time mother? Like, for instance, what to eat or what to be aware what else, based on your experience, you know, what kind of tips that you can give to our audience? And to all the audience, you know, feel free to ask any questions, yeah? Feel free to ask any question and interact with us as well. Yeah, Yuvelka, going back, what kind of uh, questions should we ask? The big question, you know, what does it feel like? <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what's the, what does it feel like? What, what's going to happen to my body? You know, because throughout pregnancy, some women enjoy their pregnancy, you know, the, the elders always have this sort of little wisdom, how they share their stories, you know, how mm -hmm. they share their remedies, you know, oh, you know, soak your feet or rub your feet or raise your feet or take it easy. Everything that you go through, the baby feels or goes through, you know, the womb is sacred. Just so many things that they can they can give you as far as wisdom goes. Ask all the questions. Should I prepare my refrigerator for meals? You know, what, what kind of meals, if, if I don't feel like eating anything because I feel so nauseous, what kind of meals? You know, maybe it's not the meals. Maybe it's just a red apple you need or some grapefruit or, you know, um, just, I mean, it, it, there's so much. That's the thing with wisdom. There's just so much. You just ask the questions. And the first time mom, everything is new to her. So... Talking about, you know, um, what to know and what to ask about the elders, uh, uh, women that, that are in the circle. How about what kind of attitude a first time mother should carry? That is that is so true. And, <laughs> and, and, and the reason why I took a deep breath is because I've, I've seen this play out. You know, um, you have first time moms, but they don't know themselves. You know, they, they don't, they didn't take the time to be single. They didn't take the time, you know, to really know or to enjoy that part of their youth. Mm. It's, it's always, you know, um, excited to be happy and married and then start a family and that this will make things better, mm -hmm. you know, so for them to get to know themselves, you know, what would, what does first time moms feel and do, you know, are they going to be able to stay home as first time moms? Will they be working? You know, um, pretty much the big ones are the ailments. You know, if I don't feel well or my body's changing, would it, would it ever go back? You know, after I do all of this, would it go back? Um, just what I can have, the toxins, can I be exposed to this? Pretty much during the beginning, you know, first time moms, they really want that security, the, the nesting, that everything is going to be okay. You're made for this. You can handle this. You're going to have the support of your husband. You're going to have the support of your family and eat those cravings. You know, whatever your body's craving, your body's calling you and telling you you need these nutrients, have some of that. Stay away from like coffee, cigarettes, you know, alcohol and those things and enjoy just keep calm because everything that you go through passes through your child you know there's been studies that show that so it's just to wow. keep the mom calm and to just enjoy that experience the best that you can and the only way that you'll really be able to do that is if you do your SWOT analysis and these cover some areas that you know bring you joy and happiness hmm that you need to know what brings joy and happiness to yourself. And then only then as a family, you can work towards that angle together. How about husband or, or the partner? What can the partner do to support in this process? Oh, he is the number one advocate, especially here in the States. You know, he is the number one 
beyond, you know, everyone thinks of a doula, but it's really the husband. You know, he's the number one support system. He's the number one advocate and he can help. He can help by being more in tune with his wife, knowing her and her needs, even without her having to speak. You know, if that makes sense, like knowing her so well that this might bring her some comfort. This might be okay for her. You know, let's try some of this stuff, being involved with her, asking the wow. questions, knowing her, knowing her, knowing. And this also early, the child education classes that they take together. So that mm -hmm. way he knows how to support her when the, I don't like to say pain. I like to say surges of energy. When the surges mm -hmm. of energies kick in, you know, how can he place his hand to show comfort? Can he give her a washcloth, you know? Can they meditate together? A lot of the hugging and just showing love really is very calming and soothing in the beginning stages. So there's so much that he can do. It's communication and education for him too. If if he doesn't come from a family background that they, they practice this all the time. Because you can come from an extended family and you practice it. You're around sisters and, you know, everybody's having babies and, you know, you have mothers and aunts and you're very involved with your grandmother you know, when you come from a certain background, certain things are second nature to you. But if you don't have that, that's the area where you need to, you know, come outside of your comfort zone and ask the questions and learn. So it, it kind of still bring back to the first initial stage when we talk about be crazy in love without being foolish in love. And these are small little things when we, you know, as you are sharing, you know, it's like, you have an end goal and you just work backwards and that's where you can list down all the questions when we are doing all the SWOT analysis and to see whether, you know, um, is, is my partner uh, 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 um, has any sibling at home or, or she, he or she is the only child at home? Is he or she um, ready to have a lot of people be surrounded like what you say just now? When, when you say and when you are sharing about, you know, what to prep when uh, a woman is uh, preparing to get pregnant or preparing to, uh, or in the pregnancy, it, it, it goes back to the front again. So that is why you have been emphasizing how important it is to ask questions. You, I think you have mentioned like numerous times about asking questions, asking questions. So it, suddenly it just hit me, Yuvelka. It's like there are so many things that we, I mean, I myself, I'm a single now. I've never thought of if I am in a relationship in future, I need to ask this sort of questions. It's really go back. If let's say I'm a person who's looking forward to have a child, whether can I, I need to ask questions to myself first without asking the questions to the other half. Exactly. You, it's important for you, you know, um, mastery of self, right? Know yourself. Know yourself. What can you handle? What is a no-go and what's a go for you? What's okay with you? What isn't? You know, so many things can happen. You know, let's just think of the what ifs when things go wrong. You know, you, you meet someone, you're in love, you want to start a family. As soon as you tell him, hey, I'm pregnant, he's gone now. <laughs> what happens to you? Can you handle mm. that? Are you okay with that? You mm. know, will you continue with the pregnancy? Because we also have an issue of the other way too, right? We always talk about the happy things. You know, there are things that occur like a loss. You can go through a loss. Are you are you able to handle that? And and I'm not saying are you able to handle that? Like, are you sitting down prepared, taking notes that just in case you have a loss? No, no one is really prepared for that. But you have some type of emotional intelligence, some type of practice with resiliency that you know that if something happens, you have that no quitting attitude or you have that, you know, there's, there's certain things that we have built in within ourselves that, that make it okay for us to cope with certain things. Does your partner have that? And we don't sit here to think about those things. You know, I can, I can be in a relationship with someone and what happens when we don't make that first monthly mortgage payment? You know, is he going to lose his cool and say things to me that are now I have a toxic relationship now I have, you know, these are the things that you need to ask the questions, not that it's going to prevent all of these things, but that you have a better idea of this other person that you just went googly eyed for, 
you know, and it's okay. Feel the flutters, feel the butterfly feelings. They are amazing. That's what we're here. We're here to experience the human experience. Love is the greatest feeling of all and love is the biggest creative force. So enjoy those, but go in with some type of strategy and ask the questions. But you, the best way is to know yourself. He mm. knows himself, you know yourself. And then together, this is now the fun begins. Let's get to know each other. Now is, <laughs> now is the fun part. You know, and then and to be to be transparent and to lay your cards because even we have to also be, you know, we, we have to have discernment, right? We have to know that there's many of, of us out here that wear a mask. We want to put the pretty picture out so that way you like us. We want to mm. be liked. We don't we, we, we don't want anybody to see something that they don't like about us. So we That's also true. have to deal with that as well. Ask the questions. Because sometimes with the answers, right, you get to know a little bit more about that person, whether they're hiding something or not. Ask the or questions. Maybe, and, or maybe play true and or dare between the two of them. Right, right. That Chuka there in a glass of wine. You know, you have to watch <laughs> out now. <laughs> <laughs> I like that true on there with a glass of wine, and mm, it's gonna be really honest and authentic from there onwards. There won't be any secret after few glasses mm -hmm. of wine down the road. Uh, so it's basically, um, you know, uh, Yuvelka, you are just sharing with us that it's important to get ourselves. Um, mentally and emotionally prepared, whether we are male or female, guy or girl, rather than being in a shock after you know we have uh, committed in the relationship and and started wanting to build a family, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, when you know yourself before you start all of these things, you know, and 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 I'm not saying that this should for some folks it takes years. But give yourself, you know, even like when you go get a new job, they give you 90 days probation, right? Give yourself 90 days to know yourself. Like really commit 90 days to yourself. 90 days out of the rest of your life, 90 days commit to yourself to get to know yourself. And, and, and inspire your partner or this person of interest. Even if it's a friend, let's play the 90 day game. You know, what do you know about yourself in 90 days? What are the new things that you discovered? And then give your relationship let's get 90 days to know each other and it might seem like a lot but if you do the math after a while it's pretty much a year a year that you're taking to court yourself to court this other person and see where it's going from here because once you have a child that's that's an 18 plus 26 year responsibility <laughs> with or without your partner you know with or without yourself right because some of us get lost in, you know, building a family. You know, we don't know what, what might happen. You might feel down, you know, in depression, might not be able to get it. There's so many like negatives that can happen. When we look at the positive side, let's keep it as positive as possible and take these steps to have some kind of strategy and some type of plan, you know, while we have friends. And I keep going friends because we should we should have a lot of friends. So that way we know what we like, what we don't like, whose company is enjoyable, who's not. What friends to pick up, bring along with us to help us with this SWOT analysis on this other person. You know, mm. it, it, be creative about it. It doesn't have to be structured in the sense that it's not fun. You could bring fun and laughter to many things in life. And being crazy in love is one of them. Yes, be crazy. And know that you're feeling what you're feeling and that you love what you're seeing and what you're experiencing. But don't be so foolish in the sense that, you know, you go after everything that you're attracted to or everything that makes you uh, feel good or, you know, don't take it easy and make the best decision because those decisions are life changing. They, they really are. You want to wow. take your time and make the best possible choice, especially before starting a family. Yeah, I, I really like um, the conversation that we are having today. Uh, it's I think it's nearly 4 a.m. morning over there in the U.S., Pennsylvania, and it's nearly, you know, the sky is getting darker in Malaysia, getting to the evening. And, um, you know, as you were sharing, 
it just reminds me of a, a couple um, that we had live talk with. We we invited them separately. Yeah. So um, they have went through domestic violence as well and they reconciled their relationship. So what they did after they reconciled their relationship was they they checked in and update each other every day. They, they check in what is their growth, each other, where, what do they do, how do they feel. And, and, and that kind of conversation also it's another kind of a SWOT analysis, perhaps. You know, you want to see whether your spouse is growing or is staying put and you're growing apart or you're going too fast, right, Yuvelka? How you feel about this? Absolutely. It, it, you, have a, it, you have a barometer now. You have something to measure against. You mm. know, are, are you okay with where I am at work? Um, are you okay where you are? You know, are you happy in this relationship? Mm. You know, are, are, are your are your needs being met? You know, we were talking about keeping it hot and spicy. What does that look like in, in, in with the marriage couple? Because mm. there's also statistics that show that there are a lot of um, sexless marriages, you know, where maybe they're not having intercourse, but they have a different kind of intimacy that's keeping them connected and very much in love. You need to ask the questions in order for this to be possible. You know, the checks and balances, like you said, with the couples, it's important. You know, are you okay today? Because everything changes day by day, right? Hour by hour, minute by minute, but day by day, things change. So just having a nice little checks and balances with the person that you decided that you want to spend the rest of your life with, I think that's, you know, that's good measure, right? You know, let me see how you're doing today. You know, how's your day today, honey? How's your, you know, how are you feeling? Are we good? Did I say something that offended you? You know, is everything all right? How how is our business? How are our children? How are our you know our elders? These things are important. You know, like as you are sharing, it just reminds me of my my girlfriends. Um, you know, we we were young. I mean, when my girlfriends got married, it was uh, early. I think it was early thirty or late twenties, and they kind of got into a shock because no one shared like how you have just shared. Um, definitely their partners are fantastic husband and also fantastic father. Um, uh, not the traditional men that I know of. They, they are very much involved in housework. They take care of their kids. But it was the, the, the amount of surprise when two families got together you know, and and the working attitudes, you know, and um, the attitudes towards the family and the expectation towards building a family. And they were like, this is not what I thought it is. You know, when we were in courtship, everything it was fine. I didn't have to wake you up at five o'clock in the morning to go to work. But now that we're living together, I'm your alarm clock, you know, or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's so many things that you'll discover. So it's important to it's important to ask the questions. And then once you get the answers, you know, to the question that you're asking, are you OK with it? And if you're not OK with it, what's the contingency plan for you? You know, there, it, it's so many different steps that we don't take a moment to realize this because it feels so good and we're so happy. And we think that this is going to be the way that it is forever. You know, the forever. <laughs> You know, like, Yuvelka, when you are sharing, it's just, you've been saying, you know, this is like the live, um, what, what was the word that you used just now? It's a live commitment. It's a, it's a lifetime project. I've never seen relationship like I need to have a checklist. It's not because I don't love that person with my heart. It's more about being crazily in love, but at the same time, knowing where should I move as a person. How should I move as a person? And listing down all these things is like a project paper. Yeah, you but when you start them out. early, see, if we would have been started early, we would already have this embedded. There's certain questions that we know we're going to ask. You know, if we start them young, you know, asking questions, be comfortable asking questions, know yourself, be sure of yourself, because it, forget about it if you don't ask these questions in a relationship look at all the problems that we've been having because a lot of questions haven't been asked you know look mm. at look at the families the structure of the families and i'm not talking about just in the united states i'm talking about globally 
you know, there's always something, something that puts the pressure on to the family. Will they sustain that? W will they be able to hold? And it depends on the people that are in that family. You know, it, mm. it depends on their commitment to each other, their commitment to their love, their free will, and what they know. Like, I know you have me. I know you got my back. You know how, how secure that feels to know that somebody has your back? They know you well enough, and then they have your back. You know, so and we say that too in the doula world, you know, that you finally have a doula to watch your back in the birth space. Mm -hmm. So with this, because I, I just jump a little bit. So with going through this first process thoroughly, you know, playing through and there between the couple over a couple of wines and then you, you realize everything and, and you note it down and you have find a way to adjust uh, among uh, between each other. And just now you were saying during the pregnancy, you know, the spouse or the partner is the main pillar of support. And, and it was true, the first initial stage, how well they know each other, you know, what kind of pets that she needs, you know, where your hand should put and will make her feel good, make her feel secured, all these small little things, right? But how about going back to women a little bit? If let's say um, when, a, when the woman is going through the pregnancy, right? Um, they have like prenatal depression or or um, emotional um, turbulence. What can they do? Maybe we just address a little bit of this before we end the live talk. Because just to let everyone know, we will be having Yuvelka back next month and also the month later. It will be a three series for talking about love and especially next month we will have a separate topic about love and women also uh just go back to this one if we are going through all these things as a as a first time mom in their pregnancy what should they do well for the postpartum depression we know that it's a very um heavy and serious topic so once pre, again pre pre yeah yeah i mm -hmm. mean mm -hmm. it, you you might have trauma before there's so many things that can happen before you even start your family before that just being pregnant might cause you traumatic uh, triggers. Mm. You know, these things, once again, in knowing that you have experienced certain things and knowing the help to get, you know, like you said, you don't know what you don't know, but there's something within you that knows what has happened to you in the past, you know, and if it was something unpleasant, that also has a potential of causing a trigger in a future event, you know, whether it's during your pregnancy, during the happiest part of your relationship. So having that, you know, knowledge to go, let me make sure that I have my therapist in place or that my husband knows that this goes on with me. So that way I have an extra person to talk to. He could read signs on me, you know, am, am I withdrawing, you know, am I too quiet? You know, mm. this is the checks and balances. It's important because all of that, from the studies that, you know, that we, we're we listening to right now, like for instance, um, what is it? Uh, PregnancyDaily.com, you know, they talk about everything that a mom feels. We, we have studies now that the baby feels also. So you want to keep her as calm as possible, as happy as possible, whatever that may be for her. You know, she's still good. It, it's not going to save you. It's not going to stop you from experiencing any of these things. What, like we talked about the SWOT analysis and asking these questions, just to just give you some more preparation to what you might be facing. And that is serious because it fluctuates. You know, whether mm. you've had anything, depression, anxiety, or any trauma before the pregnancy, during the pregnancy, and afterwards, it could be a trigger in all three stages. And having mm. that support, that partner that can read you, that knows, hey, something is up. You know, you're a little too quiet. Hey, this doesn't seem to be you. Are you okay? Even just asking and just being present helps a person during that. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, to all the audience, you know, next month we will be having Yuvelka to share with us the post pregnancy. Uh, yeah. So today it's very much covering before we commit to a relationship, what kind of attitude, what kind of tips that Yuvelka can give us, as a, especially to the young girls out there who are looking forward to a ever 
lasting happily marriage or, or, or relationship, you know, there are some reality checks that we need to check in for ourselves and also together with our partners. And Yuvelka, before, you know, thank you so much for staying with us and thanks to all the audience. Um, it's rather being very quiet. I think they are listening very attentively. Um, even myself, you know, I'm, I'm really listening. <laughs> like what my admin's been sharing, I'm preparing myself. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I did learn a lot because I never knew it's a project paper when it comes to relationship. It's, just, it's not that you are taking it very um, business structurally. It's not that. It's really ha ha balancing both the craziness and opening up yourself, you know, to receive love and to love at the same time check in the reality where it's it's meant to be because this is a life that we are talking about. This is my life. This is your life, right? So, Yuvelka, what would be your last takeaway? Um, I'm going to split this a little bit. What, is, what would be your last takeaway for all the young single girls or even those who are around my age, late 30s, uh, who... who uh, looking forward to a new relationship? That's question number one. How about your last takeaway to the guys or, or the gentlemen out there? What would be your advice for them uh, on this topic? You know, be crazy in love without being foolish in love. Absolutely. You know, um, think of your stability. You know, if, if I would want to do the takeaway, your stability, like, are you okay? Will, will you be okay? And think of that area, you know, when, enjoy it. Like you said, don't have it be so structured like business, but these techniques work in business to help run successful businesses. So these techniques will work as well in your relationship to help you run a successful relationship. And don't be in a rush. Don't be in, in a rush. There's, there's abundance in this universe for everyone. Take your time you know, take the necessary steps and ask those questions of yourself. That's like the best takeaways that, you know, that I can say to you, because it's all about asking the questions, knowing yourself and just having a plan, but it doesn't have to be so structured, you know, have fun with it, but it's like, keep your head on your shoulders at the same time, go crazy, no, 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 no. but just keep this, <laughs> keep it on the shoulders, you know, keep it on the shoulders, keep your eyes wide open so you can see and enjoy life. You know, we're not going to stop all the unforeseen occurrences, but we can enjoy many of them being well prepared. And I think this is the best time, um, whatever the uh, pandemic crisis that we are going through, it's really giving me or oh, giving us the time to go in, have that 90 days that you talk about, the 90 days to know yourself, especially in Malaysia. Everyone is um, rather uh, disturbed by the never-ending um, confined at home situation that we are facing. Why don't we make it something useful for ourselves? Take this time to reassess ourselves whether relationship is something that you're looking forward to or you're happy to be single and, and are you truly happy to be single? And if you are in a relationship, what kind of things that you expect? You know, the SWOT analysis is where it takes place. And I believe this will be the best time for all um, my fellow Malaysians out here. Uh, rather than looking at the numbers every day and be depressed or, or angry over it, do something for ourselves that will benefit ourselves as well as our partner or our family in future right and you welcome thank you thank you very much and for anyone who would love to connect with you Velka for all the you know the tips and also ask more about pregnancy tips you can reach out to her at doula grow gmail.com and you know what thank you very much for everyone who have been joining us and I would like to say thank you to uh, our beverage sponsor the vegan coffee in the very convenient way brew with plan I have been enjoying myself throughout this live talk with you Velka and the coffee thank you very much and yeah with that i would say goodbye to all the viewers and we look forward to have you Velka the next round to join us to talk about the post pregnancy and other things that we should look out for as a mother as well as as a couple so thank you very much everyone thank you Velka uh, have a great morning over there thank you for Hi. coming in at thank four you. or three o'clock in the morning and with that, thank you, everyone. Goodbye.